Hello friends, welcome to my channel on Processes Consulting. So I talk about automations and today I'm, as you can see on my screen, I'm talking about N810. So it's the issue that I have faced uh, with multiple integrations sometimes that inbuilt OAuth 2 authentication for N810. Sometimes it doesn't work, especially I faced issue when I was doing a go high level marketplace app integration with another application so i have built a custom way of uh, using oauth it gives you much more control on using it and also refreshing the access tokens whenever you need or when the authentication fails so this one is for pipe drive i have used pipe drive as the example application but you can use application of your choice in this and so this is like one level of authentication and as you know probably know in go high level we have agency access as well as uh, location access as well so in my next video i'll also share uh, how to do it for go high level as well so let's get started quickly now the first step is that we should capture the refresh token from pipe drive so as soon as you authenticate your app it should send you the authentication code here and it should execute okay so in this what we are doing is this is the webhook which is capturing the authentication code okay and then because let me show you actually so here is the refresh token uh, method in pipe drive where we have this auth url token url request url okay. in authorization we are passing the auth code which is from the code node because uh, pipe drive needs the authentication code to be base 64 so i have used the code node here to convert it but we can also use the inbuilt function in n okay then we have grant type the code and the redirect uri so this is a requirement for pipe drive which you will find in api documents for the pipe drive i'll share it in the description as well video description as well if in case you need to build a pipe drive integration okay so after that what we do is We save it to the database so i am using superbase here but you can use mysql postgres whichever you prefer so i am using basically where condition i'm using platform as pipe drive uh, but when you are building it make sure you have a unique row id so that you can identify for which application by application i mean let's say if you have a pipe drive marketplace app or a private app so which client you are uh, accessing and then after that we in this first one first step we are checking if module okay whether we got the data or not so we are just checking the length if it's greater than I mean zero if it's greater than zero then we update the access token if it's not then we insert so that is to handle the case uh, like if you if you somebody wants to reinstall the auth app for some reason refresh token is not working in that case now another next step would be yeah, so i'll just I've just organized it this way, but we'll go to the second step. So second step is this is your actual workflow where, so let's say you want to create a contact in pipe drive or you want to uh, retrieve a contact from pipe drive. So this is the workflow that you will be using here. Okay. So I have created a simple workflow to get a contact from pipe drive. So how does it work is let's say an outside application or third party application posts the request data to this webhook. I used Postman here. 
and you can see actually I can show you the JSON as well here. Okay. So I just posted an email to fetch from Pipedrive. Then we access the database to fetch the So again, you'll see that I'm using a where condition platform is type drive and, a, and the app ID to fetch it. So I'm essentially fetching the access token and refresh token here. Now I use that refresh to, uh, access token in the to get the contact from API. So you'll see that this is our URL and term would be the data that we get from first step. Authorization would be our access token, right? Now, once we get it, then we again check whether access token is valid or not. Now, this is where you can actually use a switch also instead of if, because I'm just checking two conditions. But in case, for example, there is 401 error, error there is 403 error. So based on your requirement, you can also use switch condition here. I'm using, to keep it simple, I'm using if. So if my, uh, token contains uh, invalid token value and that condition is true then we are refreshing the token so now to refresh the token what I'm doing is I've created a separate module here which is this one actually so what I'm doing is I'm posting some data from this HTTP mod node to this webhook so all these would be your separate uh, workflows okay I'll also show you the executed versions for these and yeah so i just post app id here okay otherwise i'm just responding as success because it's a get call so i'm just responding with success now let's come here now this is our final workflow that we need to create to refresh the access token in case it fails so what happens here is i receive the uh, client ID here, the app ID. Again, we follow the same process. So we get the row, uh, unique row for the access token. Now this is, uh, I'm setting up the client ID and client secret that we need from Pipedrive to access an API to convert it into base 64 when getting the access token. And now this is the uh, node where we are getting the access token okay. so you'll notice that okay, as a authorization we are sending base 64 and code version of client id and client secret and then see grant type is refresh token because we want access token and then we send the refresh token from the database now this refreshes our access token again whether that request is successful or not. So I'm checking whether the first element of my response from previous node is access token or not. So if it is access token, then we update the database. So that's how it works overall. Now I'll show you the execution, execution of one of the automations here. So this is the perfect example of this execution. You'll see, you'll notice that here it shows, I hope you can see it. Here you'll see the, this shows one item, this workflow, it goes back here. So we start from here, we get initial contact here, right? I'm just sending the email from Postman. After that, it reaches here, gets the token, sends the API, so here you'll see two count here, right? So wherever two count is there, those executions happen two times. And where you are seeing one, their execution happened one time, okay? So, right, so first time it went there. Now let me show you. So this is two of two, let's see one of one first. So you'll see that the message is 401, invalid token, right? After that, it checks right uh, one 
so that's true okay it contains this so it becomes true it goes to true path path and when it goes to true path it follows this path goes to the refresh token refreshes the token okay now we are connecting this end again to database because it has posted data to my another workflow right that is for refresh it refreshed the token updated the database so i am connecting i have connected it back to this one so that now it will get the updated token from the database and uh, fetch the contact okay now in second case so first we checked one of two which was 401 now in second case you will notice that it's 403 now it's 403 because i made some mistake and that's why i didn't get the contact details but but our token is working right because you'll notice that it says scope and url mismatch so error is not related to the authentication although i fixed it and then i was able to fetch the contact so let me show you that as well and now this time you notice that we don't have this path running right it directly came here got the token got the contact and just followed this path okay. and here we got the contact details right you can see the organization name email right? we have all the details from pipedrive for this contact and here in this workflow you will find that how we are depressing the token i have already explained it but i'll just show you what i got so so we sent the request here to this webhook got the id and then if you will see that we have the authorization header here grant type refresh token and yeah and then access token so this is generated and if i go back system checks for this so this time it becomes true it goes to true branch and updated in the database so that's updated and then it fetches in the main workflow again uh, the access token and pushes it so yeah that was about it if you have any questions related to this please feel free to add your comments in the youtube video below and or you can also send me the message on twitter i have included the links in the description thank you guys if you liked it please like it and subscribe the channel so that i'll keep posting such videos thank you so much have a great day bye